Today on Nerd Out, Local Transaction Monitor. Welcome back to Nerd Out, the show where we take a look at Cardano, we break it down, but we don't dumb it down. Today we're talking about the new Local Transaction Monitor Mini Protocol coming out in the 1.34.0 version of the node. So let's dive in. So what's new? In 1.34.0, we have this new mini protocol available. It is called Local Transaction Monitor, and it's only available locally running on the same uh, client as a node. It's a, it's a client server version, not a client to client, or not, sorry, not a node to node protocol like between nodes on the internet. It's, it only works if you're locally on the machine because it talks to the local Unix socket. Um, it was developed by Matthias Bincourt, also known as K2RZ from Twitter. He works at IOG. Uh, the purpose of this mini protocol, it's designed to expose additional information that we don't have today about the Cardano mempool. So let's talk a little bit about the mempool. What is it? It is a, an ordered list, first in, first out, list of transactions that are waiting to get into blocks. So if you are using a Daedalus client, you have your own mempool. When you create a transaction, it goes into your local Cardano nodes mempool. And then that mempool talks to other Cardano nodes through, the, uh, through a different mini protocol called Transaction Submit mini protocol. And that gets propagated to other nodes. And it propagates on outgoing connections. So it works for a Daedalus client that's behind a firewall. Um, it doesn't need any incoming connections to propagate transactions. And so those transactions get shared out with other Cardano nodes. Whenever there's room in somebody else's mempool, the transactions get out. Uh, so whenever there's a new block that arrives, we look at the node looks at all the transactions in the block and any that are in the block, in other words, it made it to the blockchain, then they're immediately removed from that local node's mempool. And most of the time, this is fine. The, there's no issue with that. Sometimes a block gets rolled back. So a block arrives at your node, you remove the transactions from the mempool, and then suddenly another block arrives that conflicts with that block or has a longer chain or has a lower VRF hash. Um, and so that block wins in some type of battle. And maybe the transactions in that new block are not the same as the transactions in the block before that you had. And so maybe there was a transaction in your mempool that got removed, but hadn't yet made it into this new block. And so that can be a problem. And this mini protocol helps us figure out what, what happened in those scenarios. So let's take a look at it. All mini protocols work on the idea of states and agency. So all the boxes here are different states that the protocol can be in. And this is a shared state between the client and the server. Um, the client would be like your local wallet that's talking to a local node like Daedalus. Um, or it could be another client like Firehose or Ogmios or, or any of the other clients that talk on this Unix socket. It could be Cardano CLI for that matter. So we start here in the idle state. And then all of these lines, they're, they're state transitions. So they're messages that get passed between the client and the server that tell it to transition from one state to another. And each of these states has an agency. In other words, whose turn is it to talk? So in the idle state, the client has an agency. So if I'm the client and talking to the node and I'm in the idle state, it's up to me to send a message. And the client or the server just sits there waiting for this message. In this case, it's the acquire message that has to get sent. And once I've sent that acquire message, both the client and the server move into this acquiring, uh, acquiring state. And then after that, um, we move from acquiring to acquired and we get into this await, await acquire state, <clears throat> or sorry, we send messages 
that get us eventually into this acquired state. Once we're in an acquired state, the client again has agency. So in this acquiring state, the server has agency. So we've moved from client, server, server responds with the acquired message, and we end up in this acquired state. And this await acquire is if we want to uh, you know, go back and acquire the latest mempool state, or we can just use the current snapshot of the mempool that we already had. Uh, most of the time, you would stay in the acquired state until you're done with it, and then if you've got another transaction coming in, you'd go back to await acquire and then get back to acquired again. And so here we're back in client agency. So we have we have the ball, and we can send one of these three messages: has transaction, next transaction, or get sizes. So has transaction does exactly what you would think. Here's a transaction ID. Do you have it in your local mempool? Now maybe it has it because, or it doesn't have it because it was rolled back. Maybe it doesn't have it because it was put into a block. We don't really know. This is just a, a simple check of whether is this in the mempool or not. Um, next transaction allows us to walk through the mempool transaction after transaction and, and kind of get a, an, a, an accounting of everything that's in the mempool. And finally, this get sizes transaction does something similar to what uh, the Prometheus metrics can give you for the mempool. They can give you number of bytes and and uh, number of transactions, but it also has uh, one other additional parameter. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then in this busy state, that's where again the server has agency before it has replied with, you know has transaction, which gives you a boolean, next transaction, which gives you all the transaction raw data, or get sizes. So let's take a look at that get sizes one next. So this is the message that comes back from it. And it comes back as raw CBOR, of course, but this is kind of the unpacked version of it. It comes back with a capacity in bytes. So how big is this mempool I'm talking to? And that's one thing that's, that's not currently in uh, the Prometheus metrics, as far as I know, I haven't checked. I haven't checked in this latest version. Maybe they added it. Um, and then we also get back size and bytes and number of transactions. So where is this useful to use? It's very useful to ensure delivery of transactions to the chain. So if you want to make sure that your transaction stayed in the mempool, um, it's also important to estimate wait times for transactions in light wallets. So if there's a light wallet and it can use this to kind of determine, maybe it's talking to a whole bunch of nodes on the back end, it can determine which mempool it's talking to has the most space. So that transaction can get on the chain sooner maybe, uh, you know, for where to submit. Um, yeah, so it could determine the best place to place a new transaction into. It can determine estimate wait times based on how full the mempools are. Um, this mini protocol already exists today in Agmios, um, also developed by Matthias K2RZ. Find him on Twitter, follow him. He's a really good person to follow. Um, it's also going to be soon built into Firehose and then also come potentially to the wallets using it, which is Jiro and CC Vault. So that's uh, that's what I've been working on lately, and it's I'm really excited about this new mini protocol. Glad it's coming to Cardano. Just gives us a little more visibility into what the node's doing. And as always, we like those slow and steady incremental improvements that uh, IOG tends to put into the system. And with that, nerd out. <laughs>